Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed, alleluia. Welcome to worship on this fourth Sunday in Easter. Today we are also celebrating uh, Creation Care Sunday, the Sunday closest to Earth Day, which isn't, uh, you know, a church, uh, isn't a church day, a day in the church calendar, but it is a day we remember God's first call to us, and that is to tend and care, to uh, care for the creation that God has made. And so, much of our service today will be reflected in that call, in our praying, in our confessing, and in our call to worship. And we thought on this beautiful, we're recording this on a Thursday, this beautiful Thursday that we would celebrate with you and worship with you in part in the middle of our, uh, of our gardens. Our worship continues then with our call to worship. We enter the song of creation. Earth cradles our ancestors, birthing new life. We enter the song of creation. Sky brings darkness and light, holds storms and the stars. We enter the song of creation. Mountains peaked with snow, hills swaying with grasses. We enter the song of creation. Humanity between the ground and the heavens. We come here humbly as one earthly family to worship our Creator, the giver of form, the maker of space. Amen.
Let us pray together now our prayer of confession for today. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who calls forth creation, evokes praise from creation, and stirs life in creation. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God, the creation, and one another. Let us pray. God of righteousness and justice, you have made the earth and all that is in it, but we have failed to honor your good work. We do not recognize your presence among us, and our hardened hearts do not hear creation's cry. We have made your good land a desolation, and we dishonor your image in our neighbors. Forgive us in your steadfast love, O Lord, for trampling your vineyards and polluting your sky. On your holy mountain, call us again to be stewards of your earth and to join all creation in songs of praise. Amen. Dearly beloved, rejoice, for the incarnate word has come to you. Laying aside all heavenly glory, the servant of all is obedient unto death to make of you and all the earth a new creation. Rejoice for Christ from whom nothing can separate you, forgives you today all of your sins. Rejoice for the one whose name is majestic in all the earth, raises you up to newness of life. Amen. <laughs> The Lord be with you. Let us pray together the prayer of the day. Sovereign of the universe, your first covenant of mercy was with every living creature. When your beloved Son came among us, the waters of the river welcomed him, the heavens opened to greet his arrival, the animals of the wilderness drew near as his companions. With all the world's people, May we who are washed into new life through baptism seek the way of your new creation, the way of justice and care, mercy and peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Please take some time now to share God's peace with any persons you may be worshiping with in person. Or again, today, give someone a call, send someone a text, 
sent an email sharing the peace of the Lord on this Sabbath day. The first reading for this Creation Care Sunday is from the book of Genesis, chapter 1, verse 26, through chapter 2, verse 4. We hear the lesson this morning from the message translation of the Bible. God's very first call to humanity is to care for the earth God has created. God spoke, let us make human beings in our image, make them reflecting our nature, so they can be responsible for the fish in the sea, the birds in the air, the cattle, and yes, earth itself, and every animal that moves on the face of the earth. God created human beings. God created them godlike, reflecting God's nature. God created them male and female. God blessed them. Prosper, reproduce, fill earth, take charge. Be responsible for fish in the sea and birds in the air, for every living thing that moves on the face of the earth. Then God said, I've given you every sort of seed-bearing plant on earth and every kind of fruit-bearing tree given to you for food, to all animals and all birds, everything that moves and breathes, I give whatever grows out of the ground for food. And there it was. God looked over everything he had made. It was so good, so very good. It was evening, it was morning, day six. Heaven and earth were finished down to the last detail. By the seventh day, God had finished God's work. On the seventh day, God rested from all God's work. God blessed the seventh day. God made it a holy day because on that day, God rested from his work, all the creating God had done. This is the story of how it all started of heaven and earth when they were created. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel for this fourth Sunday in Easter, also Creation Care Sunday, is from the Gospel according to St. John, the 10th chapter. The fourth Sunday of Easter is also Good Shepherd Sunday, and so we hear uh, the story of uh, Jesus talking about himself, uh, the words of Jesus speaking of himself as the Good Shepherd. Jesus said, I am the Good Shepherd. The Good Shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away and the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because a hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me just as the father knows me and I know the father and I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. And for this reason, the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it up again. I have received this command from my Father. This is the gospel of our Lord. Thanks be to God.
Grace to you and peace from Jesus, our Good Shepherd. Happy Good Shepherd Sunday and happy day before Earth Day. Thank you for this opportunity to, to read and think and pray about these very rich texts that all talk about and demonstrate the intimate care that God has for God's own creation. You know, at first I was a little skeptical about how I could work in a Good Shepherd Sunday and Earth Day all at once. Um, and I remember um, when I was in high school, I was part of the All Ohio Youth Orchestra and I got to know sheep. You see, I'm a city girl and I'd never really been close to sheep other than those made with cotton balls and pipe cleaners. But our barracks were downwind of the sheep barn at the Ohio State Fair where we performed. And I had a very earthy experience with the sheep. Nevertheless, in all of the readings today, not just the Psalm, Psalm 23, so beloved, nor just the passage from John where Jesus declares that he is the good shepherd, and that his own hear his voice. But in the other passages as well, we hear about God's tender care, particularly and intimately involved with the creation. Very often, it seems to me, in Western Christianity and also in Western philosophical thought, there is a sense that that is with, of, that of which is of the earth, that is that which is material, is somehow inferior to that which is considered to be spiritual. And there is a great gulf between the material and the spiritual in a lot of Western thought and Western philosophy. And I think it creeps into as well, our own spirituality. And that's just not the case. We believe and celebrate that the beginning of Easter started in fact at Christmas with the incarnation, where God took on human form where God took on the form of Jesus, was incarnate, took on human flesh, and became in his earthly life the earth creature. Just as Adam and Eve and all of us were created from the dust of the earth, from dirt itself, from the soil, so Jesus has taken on this material nature. And we believe and confess that even in the resurrection, Jesus is fully human and fully divine. We make a mistake and we miss a lot, I think, when we try to walk away from our own creatureliness, when we try to somehow escape uh, this world that we're in and are not able to recognize that, that God still cares about and is still creating this place, this earth, this cosmos, all of it. And that human creatures are just one part of the creation. And we have been called to tend this garden that God has given to us. And so when we disavow somehow our own creatureliness, I think we set ourselves off and apart from God. Luther, Luther put it this way, his understanding of God's presence in all of creation. Luther said that God's entire divine nature is holy and entirely in all creatures, more deeply, more inwardly, more present than the creature is to itself. Somehow seeing ourselves as separate also sets us up against God. And I would contend that our rebellion against or our pushback against our own createdness, the beauty of that creation, the limits of that creatureliness causes a lot of damage to the rest of creation and to ourselves. In the gospel stories, we have two accounts of women who anoint Jesus with pure nard. They came to tend to Jesus' earthly body just before his crucifixion. And Jesus praised these women for doing that. And nard, as it turns out, is an extremely rare and very pungent perfume, greatly prized in Jesus' day and still today. 
And the description of the aroma of nard is not one of flowers, um, but one of earthiness, of, of, of hummus almost, like, like soil of the earth. We hear in, in the story of Mary of Bethany anointing Jesus that the fragrance filled the whole room and was probably so powerful that even on the cross and in the tomb, the earthly body of Jesus still had the fragrance of the earth. It is to this good and beautiful creation that God has sent the good shepherd to tend the sheep, to take care of our creatureliness because that too is holy. And because of the incarnation of God with us in the flesh, all of our lives, that which is created, that which is temporal is also holy. In the 23rd Psalm, which we probably all know by heart, we hear about the Lord as shepherd, tending this flock, bringing them to verdant pastures, taking care of these earthly needs for food, for water, for sustenance, for peace, for wholeness, that this is the promise of how God shows up for humankind and for all of creation of which we are a part. The good shepherd cares for our earthly lives. In the gospel according to John, which we just heard, we hear how Jesus is the good shepherd who lays down his life for the sheep. Sometimes people think when uh, Christians talk about these things, particularly in the face of the climate crisis that, that we're in right now, about the danger and the harm that we have caused to, to the climate, that all of this imagery about Jesus being the good shepherd is somehow just pie in the sky, Pollyannish, wishful thinking that doesn't come to grips with the actual danger which we face, the harm we have caused, and the harm that's being caused to us. But if you think again about the story in John, about Jesus saying he's the good shepherd, it doesn't shy away at all from the actual dangers and perils of this world. We hear about hirelings who are willing to flee rather than lay down their lives in order to protect the charge which they have been given. But the good shepherd doesn't do that. We hear about wolves who come to snatch and to scatter. But that does not happen because the good shepherd protects the flock. We hear about other flocks and the good shepherd says those are not excluded because all will become part of this one flock. In all of these stories, all of these passages that we hear on Good Shepherd Sunday, we hear about a real flesh and blood with us God, a God who does not stay off at a distance as Bette Midler made so popular in her, her hit in the 90s, but a, a God who has come near to us, a God who is better understood and more clearly seen as we take a look at all of creation and find our place in it. A God who does not wish us to be walking dead or those who are agents of death, but in still, instead has called us to be agents of this living God who cares for all of creation. We also believe and confess not to let ourselves um, off the hook or not to say we have nothing to do with, with working toward the care of creation, but in order to bring hope, if not optimism, at least hope, that God is still creating, that God is still present in all of creation, and that God will bring all of creation to fruition. We hope and pray as we hear these stories of a God right near us, a God who is our good shepherd, a God who tends to the physical as well as the spiritual need of this flock, that we can be agents of such a God who brings life and reconciliation for all of the creation, not just for the human part of that creation. And this, this is actually, I think, what we are being called to do. Very often, I think people become almost hopeless when we hear about the severity of climate change. And it has been quite a year when natural disaster after natural disaster has caused fires and flooding and tornadoes and hurricanes. And when we begin to see our place in making those natural disasters even more deadly and acute, and we can lose hope. 
but God will never give up on God's creation. And what the world needs to hear from God's people, from God's church, that we're called to tend and steward this good garden, and that this trail of, of mercy and justice, this trail of goodness and mercy for all, this abundant life, which is the verse just before the gospel story for today, is something that God means for all of creation and that we are a part of that. We are called to be agents of life as we follow our good shepherd. Amen. Let us affirm our faith together now in the God who raises the dead and makes us children by love and grace. We use the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. This morning, our fourth graders have um, participated in our uh, faith and money milestone. It's a chance to talk about stewardship. Many fourth graders and parents gathered in our 
We're still looking for a new name for the Old Sanctuary Fellowship Hall. You know what I'm talking about, those of you who have been here. Uh, to think together and learn together about the connection between uh, our finances, our money, and uh, God's call to live as God's servants. And so with the congregation who will gather uh, in person on uh, Sunday morning, I invite you to uh, pray this prayer. God, you are so good to us. You are generous and kind. We want to say thank you by caring for what you have given us and by giving part of it back to you. Help us to be joyful givers with thankful hearts. Lord, bless our fourth graders, their families, and all families so that they may continue to be a blessing to those around them. In Jesus' name, amen. In addition to our fourth grade milestone, we are also celebrating a fifth grade milestone. And the fifth grade milestone is creation care, earth care. And so it's especially appropriate today uh, that we celebrate that milestone with our fifth graders and families. And once again, I invite you to join me in prayer for them. God of creation, we thank you for these fifth graders and their families. Give them a deep love for your creation. As they grow, help them to wisely care for the earth. Make them witnesses to your gifts of sun and light, seas, rivers, and lakes, prairies and mountains, plants, animals, and the whole human family. We ask these things in the name of Jesus, who walked this good earth with us. Amen. Alive in the risen Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit, we bring our prayers before God who promises to hear us and answer in steadfast love. Almighty God, your great love has placed us in your creation and you commanded us to care for it. Where we have degraded or destroyed earth's bounty, forgive us. Where we have taken beauty and majesty for granted, have mercy upon us. Where we have become estranged from the land, water, and creatures with whom we share this planet, mend what is broken. Creator God, hear our prayer. Gracious God, in such a great and complex world, we often feel so small and helpless as if what we do has no impact on the rest of your creation. Give us an awareness of how our own lifestyles impact your creation and empower us to make necessary changes to heal and protect what you have made. Creator God, hear our prayer. Merciful God, in environmental catastrophes, the people who suffer first and greatest are often the poorest of the poor. Protect those who live in poverty and suffer the devastating effects of flooding, drought, and climate change. Give us and our leaders wisdom and courage to act on their behalf. Creator God, hear our prayer. Healing God, as members of this creation, we live and die according to the cycle of life that is common in all the world. Give help and healing today to those who are ill or injured, especially Soliet, Larry, Dean, Theo, Bruce, Terry, Mike, Jordan, Julie, Lisa, Dennis, Jana, Sheila, Peter, Elisa, Marge, Anne, Amy, Rick, Erica, Doris, Heidi, and others we name in our hearts and with our voices. Creator God, hear our prayer. God of the sun and the moon, of the mountains, deserts, and plains, God of the mighty oceans, of rivers, lakes, and streams, 
God of all creatures that live in the seas and fly in the air, God of every living thing that grows and moves on this sacred earth, you have entrusted us with caring for all these things in our home. You raise us with Christ and have formed us by the Holy Spirit into your people. Empower us to become the change we pray for so that we will live out your calling to act as faithful stewards of what you have made for our sake now and for every generation which is to come. Amen. Once again, welcome to worship on this uh, Creation Care Sunday. Uh, thanks to our musicians and all who are participating. The words we uh, use this morning are from, uh, much of them, many of them are from a liturgy created by Lutherans Restoring Creation, which is an organization, uh, a gathering of Lutherans, a growing group of Lutherans who are working to uh, lead and inspire and guide the church into taking more seriously our first call uh, to uh, care for this planet that God has made. So thank you again for participating in this worship time, wherever you are. A few announcements. Uh, we have a few more milestones coming up here at Spirit of Joy. Uh, before the end of the school year, our kindergarten prayer pillow milestone will be happening on Wednesday, May 12th. That evening, uh, so um, kindergartners, we hope that you are able to join us in person if at all possible. And our high school graduation milestone in which we wrap our graduates in uh, a blanket uh, as a way of reminding them of God's love for them and this congregation's love for them as they step out into the next chapter of their lives. Uh, that milestone will be celebrated both on Sunday May 16th and Sunday, uh, May 23rd. We know that life gets busy for graduates and their families around the time of graduation. Uh, and so uh, we uh, look forward to uh, welcoming and celebrating with graduates on one of those days. We continue to keep Pastor Soliet uh, in Nicaragua in our prayers. Uh, I don't know that made it the recording last week, but Pastor Soliet has contracted COVID along with some members of her family uh, so please keep her. Uh, she is the person that we support with our dollars as a mission interpreter, a person who works with groups from our country uh, who come to Nicaragua and communicates from the church in Nicaragua to us what is happening there. So please keep her in prayers. A call committee update. Our call committee has met with uh, three candidates, conducted interviews with them, and now is in the process of discerning uh, this weekend, if one of those persons are, is the person they will recommend for call. So please uh, add your prayers to those of our call committee and the leaders at this uh, important time of uh, discernment. Next uh, Thursday, April uh, 29th, you are invited to participate with other uh, persons around the country in an evening uh, with Rick Steves, a celebration of calling with Rick Steves. Our congregation has been one of 24 of different sizes, different denominations uh, that's been part of a grant looking at how to create a culture of calling in the congregation. At that grant uh, period has come to an end and so we're ending with a time of celebration. It will be a virtual celebration and uh, you're invited to join us, which, which should be a, a fun evening. A couple of the things that uh, Rick Steves will be talking about is travel as a vocational process and what do you do when you can't do what you're called to do. It should be an evening of storytelling and uh, celebrating. That event will happen from 6 o'clock to 8.30 Central Daylight Time. And if you go to our constant contact uh, that we sent out this weekend, uh, you'll find a link there to register. If you didn't receive that or don't receive that, please contact our church office at info, I-N-F-O, at spiritofjoy.net. There are some more uh, announcements uh, on the bulletin that you should have received with this announcement about worship today. We continue now by receiving offerings. Again, thank you so much. Uh, for your ongoing support of Spirit of Joy as we 
we go about our work, uh, helping to feed our neighbors in multiple ways. Today is uh, Food on the Fourth Sunday, so we're receiving gifts of food that will go to our friends at Feeding South Dakota. Uh, this, uh, our space has been filling up with kids these past weeks with milestones, in-person confirmation, uh, other things are happening. We're gradually adding to our in-person schedule and look forward to more and more people in our community using our space. So thank you for supporting our capital campaign. Thank you for your gifts uh, to our ministry. You may continue to support us by mailing in an offering or by going to our website and looking for the giving link there and uh, support us in that way. Once again today, as you wor worship with us virtually, you're invited to join those who will gather around this table to receive the body and blood of Jesus. If you haven't done so, I invite you to pause uh, the video at this time, the recording, and uh, gather to where you are worshiping some uh, bread or crackers and some grape juice or wine so that you may eat and drink uh, with us. Again, this morning, we'll invite, the, wherever you are worshiping, we'll invite uh, you, somebody in your group, if there's more than one of you worshiping, uh, to speak the words of promise, uh, the words of institution, which remind us uh, that Christ is present for the forgiveness of sins. Speak those out loud so that you can hear them, even if it's your voice. And then when it comes time to serve, again, if, whether you're serving yourself or you've chosen one person, in your group to do the serving, please speak the words um, that are given. This is the body of Christ given for you. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. Speak those words out loud. Before we eat and drink now, we pray together the prayer that Jesus has taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Please eat and drink.
And now may the holy and precious body and blood of Jesus Christ, our crucified and risen Lord and Savior, strengthen you and keep you in God's grace today, this Easter season, and always. Amen. Receive the benediction, the God of all creation, of flowers and trees, of butterflies and bees, of squirrels and mountain lions, bless you, keep you, and strengthen you for the work of loving all creation. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Go in peace. Share the good news. Hallelujah.